This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizens. How are you doing? I had to, I had to do that. An oldie, oldie, but goodie. Had to, had to go there. Because we, it's time for us to shine and shine bright. Amen. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. Yes, it's time for us to shine. We need to shine bright. And we need to carry that everywhere we go. So good morning, good morning. I pray and hope that you woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord. And that you are ready to conquer and be victorious in this day and today. All right, so this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Ezekiel 21 and 22 this morning, and then Hebrews 11, starting with verse 23. And then we're going to read 12, but we're only reading verses 1 to 3, 1, 2, and 3 in, verse, in, in chapter 12. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for waking us up this morning, getting us on our way. And we are ready to shine for you, Lord God. Help us to shine and help us to carry that shine everywhere we go. Help us to just season the earth and be about your business and be about your work, Lord God. Pour it into us. Show us the way. Show us the way as a whole body and then show us each individual. Show us the way and what we are to do, the next steps we are to take, Lord God. The Help us to write the plans down and help us to write the purpose down and help us to be able to you know, execute and be able to make those plans happen. Send us the resources that we need, Lord God. We already know that all we really need is you. We need you physically, mentally, and, 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 and spiritually, Lord God. We'll be able to conquer and be able to accomplish anything as long as we have you, Lord God, and we need you with us each and every single day, Lord Jesus. And so we just glorify you and we thank you. We pray and we continue to seek increase in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We thank you for the word. We thank you that we have the opportunity to get into the word, to read the word, to learn more about you and to develop our relationship with you as a whole, as a body, and as individuals, Lord God, and we just glorify you and we thank you that you are still healing. You are healing us mentally, emotionally. You're healing us spiritually and physically, Lord God. And we thank you and we give you all glory and honor. And we pray this prayer in the pre presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. 
Yes, we want to shine, shine bright for the Lord. All right, so good morning. If you are just coming on, Kingdom Citizen, we are in Ezekiel 21 and 22. Ezekiel 21. All right. All right, here we go. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy places and prophesy against the land of Israel and say to the land of Israel, thus said the Lord, behold, I am against thee and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh from the south to the north, that all flesh may know that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It shall not return any more. Sigh, therefore, thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins, and with bitterness sigh before their eyes. And it shall be when they say unto thee, Wherefore sighest thou? that thou shalt answer for the tidings because it cometh and every heart shall melt and all hands shall be feeble and every spirit shall faint and all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh and it shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus said the Lord, say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth, contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh, because it is a trial. And what if the sword contemn even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord God. Okay, I'm going to read some of the commentary. I'm going to pause right there and read some of the commentary. It says, God's opposition to his people is expressed by the image of the drawn sword. The common way of referring to warfare in the Old Testament history would prove that God's drawn sword was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and his armies. The sword refers to divine judgment. No one will survive the coming invasion, not even the righteous. The Bible advocates corporate responsibility. The principle is illustrated in the case of Achan. For Judah as a nation, it was too late to repent. Destruction was decreed. Individuals could repent and have assurance and eternal life. But many righteous people were going to be swept up in the coming destruction. Even today, Christians should not assume that God will preserve the righteous from general disasters or judgments against nations. 
I, 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 you know, reading this commentary, I guess it's like, you know, what we're going through right now, you know, it's like everybody, everybody has been hit, you know, but I think, I think the Lord God, um, for Jesus, for the salvation, for the sacrifice, you know, um, that we can, that we can, you know, still go to our advocate and our, and our, our mediator, we can, we can still go. We have an everlasting covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ that can never, that will never break. God said, it'll never, it'll never go away. No matter what, what he has to do, what he has to come with, you know, we have an everlasting covenant with the Lord God. And so, uh, but that almost still sounds like, you know, what's going on even right now, you know, today, like the, the, the natural disasters, the things that are happening all over, like the whole globe, the whole world, you know, everybody, uh, it has been has been hit you know and so that's what that sounds like even right now <laughs> you know it's 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 like you know as we read the word as we read the word it's it's lining up even with the times i mean this this probably happened thousands and thousands of years ago and yet is lining up with the time that we're living in right now you know is lining up with everything uh as we read you know and so it's like you know some of the some of the questions that we may have we're finding it as we read this word you know we're finding answers we're finding answers um, to even today's problems, we're finding answers, you know, uh, as we read the word. So in verse 13, that's why it says it is a trial. This is a trial. You know, we, we are going through a trial for real. <laughs> Amen. All right. So Ezekiel 21 verse 14. says thou therefore son of man prophesy and smite thy hands together and let the sword be doubled the third time the sword of the slain it is the sword of the great men that are slain which entereth into their privy chambers i have set the point of the sword against all their gates that their heart may faint and their ruins be multiplied Ah, uh, it is made bright. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. Go thee one way or other, either on the right hand or on the left, whithersoever thy face is set. I will also smite mine hands together, and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have said it. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Also thou son of man, Appoint thee two ways that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. Both twain shall come forth out of one land and choose thou a place. Choose it at the head of the way to the city. Appoint a way that the sword may come to Rabbath of the Ammonites and to Judah in Jerusalem, the defensed. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way at the head of the two ways to use divination. He made his arrows bright. He consulted with images. He looked in the liver. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem to appoint captains, to appoint the mouth in the slaughter, to lift up the voice without shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast them out and to build a fort. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight to them that have sworn oaths, but he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered in that your transgressions are discovered, 
so that in all your doings, your sins do appear. Because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. And thou profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Thus said the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. And I will give it him. And thou son of man prophesy and say, thus said the Lord God concerning the Ammonites and concerning their reproach. Even say thou the sword, the sword is drawn for the slaughter. It is furbished to consume because of the glittering. Whilst they see vanity unto thee, whilst they divine a lie unto thee to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain of the wicked whose day is come when their iniquity shall have an end. Shall I cause it to return unto his sheath? I will judge thee in the place where thou wast created in the land of thy nativity. And I will pour out my indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee unto the hand of brutish men and skillful to destroy. Thou shalt be for fuel to the fire. Thy blood shall be in the midst of the land. Thou shalt be no more remembered for I, the Lord, have spoken it. All right. Uh, let's see, I'm going to read some of this. I'm going to go, I'm going to go back, starting with verse 14, reading in some of the commentary it says the act of clapping the hands is an expression of anger. The mention of the third strike of the sword may refer to the three attacks and deportations that the Babylonians launched against Jerusalem. In 605, 597, and 588 through 586 BC. Rabat, Rabath, Rabath or Rabbah was the capital of Ammon. It is the location of modern Ammon, the capital of Jordan. The combined conspiracy of Judah and Ammon against Babylonian in 589 BC undoubtedly persist, persisted this coming of the Babylonian army. The practice of shaking marked arrows in a quiver, letting them fall to the ground or shooting them into the distance and then interpreting the pattern was known as bellomancy. bellomancy. It was a form of casting lots. The images appear to have been miniature household gods that were consulted even by Israelites. The examination of the liver of a sacrificial animal called hep hepatoscopy. And the best known of these practices in Mesopotamian literature is mentioned only here in the Old Testament. Though God did not condone divination in any form as sovereign over the earth, he controls all things. Thus, in some sense, even pagan practices could, by God's choice, reveal his will. Wow. I I really am kind of glad that I, you know, I thank the Lord God that 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 I wasn't raised in some cultures certain cultures because I'm like you know I'm like knowing knowing me it's like it would be it it would I would probably be one of those that would be cast out because I couldn't see me creating an image and then worshiping it like I I, I never could get that and I never could understand that, you know, <laughs> that that's just, you know, not me and not in my spirit. 
So it's like, wow. And, 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 to, and, to, and to read, you know, that, you know, people of God, to read this, that people of God, and, 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 and I know that there are some, even now, still today, that there are people of God that are they they have idols and they have they have idols in within their heart they have idols physically they have you know and and it's like all trust in god is not there you know and 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 a lot of times you can see it you can it's like you know there there's been many times where i've ended up in conversations with people who i know believe in the lord god but the way they talk and, the, and, the, and their actions um, would let you know that they really don't trust the Lord God Almighty, you know, and, and, and there would be times where I would just like my heart would break because I'm like, God got you, you know, it's like. As a as a as a person like me, it's, it's hard, it's, it's sometimes kind of hard to see it. Cause you know how real God is, you know, you know how real God is and how much he loves that person. And you know how much he wants to bless that person. And it's like, it's, it, it's, it's hard because, you know, you hear in their language and how they talk and how they respond to things that they really don't trust God. And it's really hard sometimes to, um, you know, and so I know for Ezekiel, it was probably really, really hard because he has to watch not only he has to be a, a, a witness to not only the wicked at this time being taken down, but he has to watch the righteous be taken down. It's like and I know that was I know that was probably hard for him, you know. Sometimes, sometimes when God asks us to do something and we're placed in a certain position, you know, sometimes we are, we are, you know, filled with that tough love. Like God is saying that I need you to do this. This is what I need you to say. This is what I need you to do. And, and it's that tough love that, that we have to implement. And it's, and it's hard because it's like, whoa, you know, and, but you understand, you understand where God is coming from, you know? So, yeah, let's go to Ezekiel 22. Good morning. Good morning. If you are just coming on, if you have anything to say, according to what we just read, you know, sometimes, um, Sometimes we can be reading something and God, God, it, 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 it triggers off a message, you know, that the Lord is leading for us today, you know? So anything that is anything that, you know, is in your spirit, when we read, you know, go ahead and say it and make comments, you know? It's, it's not going to always be perfect and it's not going to always be right. Um, but to be able to express what's, what's happening in here, you know, that's what communication is about also for us to learn, to be able to communicate with each other. So don't forget to make comments. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. You know, whatever is, whatever is going on in your spirit, um, put it out there. You never, you never know. Uh, it could be something that the Lord is, you know, wanting us to talk about, you know, because we, we're going through a lot today. We're going through a lot in this time in 2020, you know? And so we're learning a lot getting into this word every morning. We're learning a lot. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of things that, even we're reading and we haven't even really touched on yet. Um, but that's why you get into the word even more. Even after we finish the Bible this time, we get back into it and, and God will show us even more, even more 
every time we get into the word. All right, so Ezekiel 22. Good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Ezekiel 22. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Then say thou, thus saith the Lord God, the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and hast defiled thyself in thine idols, which thou hast made. And thou hast caused thy days to draw near and are come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which art infamous and much vexed. Behold the princes of Israel, every one were in thee to their power to shed blood. In thee have they set light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dwelt, dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. And in thee they eat upon the mountains in the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. In thee they have dis they in thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another hath lewdly defiled his daughter in law, and another in thee hath humbled his sister, his father's daughter. In thee have they taken gifts to shed blood. Thou hast taken usury and increase, and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion, and hast forgotten me, saith the Lord God. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain which thou hast made, and at thy blood which hath been in the midst of thee. Can thine heart endure? Or can thy hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Good morning, good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Ezekiel 22, verse 17. So Ezekiel 22, verse 17. Says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire up on it to melt it. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, 
Say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no differences, difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus said the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore, have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. So we we want to we want to thank the Father that He has already set it up, because. Th- This is not the first time he has mentioned that he looked for a man that would stand in the gap. You know, many times in the Old Testament, he said he he mentions that he looked for someone who would stand in the gap. And he and and each time it says he found none. And so we want to thank the Lord God that he took it upon himself. He said, I will go and save them, you know. He said, I will save them. I will save them from themselves. I will save them from the hands of the enemy. And I will save them. And we want to thank the Lord God because, you know, from verse 26 to 29, you know, these things are still happening even now. And, and, I, and, and, and the word keeps bringing me there that we continue to repeat this evil history we continue to repeat and and the you know god is pointing out how we have literally mixed ourselves within i mean he says the he says her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things that have put no difference between the holy and profane that's happening right now. That's been happening from the time I can remember. They, we're not, we're not def- deferring the difference between people of God and people of the world. We don't, we don't, we, we, we literally don't separate us from them. And so we, we, we were out here and we're living among them and things like that. And we turn, we turn our face, you know, from, from things that are happening and, and these things are happening even right now. So we want to thank the Lord God that he had already established an everlasting covenant. He already established and wrote it in the heavens the day that he would come in flesh, the day that he would be crucified, the day that he would die and rise again, the day that he would go and 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 prepare a place for us. You know, we want to thank the Lord God that he had already written, written it in the heavens that this is what he was going to do. Because we, we, we're still doing this, you know, 
read verses 26 through 29 again and just and and really really hear the voice of the Lord God you know and 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 him asking Ezekiel are you you know are you going to judge are you going to judge you know what's going on you know God is the judge of all but he he selects certain prophets, certain pastors, certain teachers. He selects certain people to, to come out and point out and say, hey, look at all this wrong that you're doing. He selects certain people and he pu puts that boldness in them to be able to come out and point out. And and you're supposed to do that definitely in your own inner circle, you know, if you see wrongdoing happening and you know that it's wrong and you know that it's against it's it's not something that's wrong against you it's something wrong that's against the Lord God almighty you're supposed to you're supposed to take them to the side and say hey you you shouldn't be doing that you know you shouldn't be doing that and 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 you know that's not that's not even the Lord. That's not even the word. You know, that's you, you, you walking around telling people that you are children, you're a child of God. And yet you're still continuing in this sinful life. You're supposed to open your mouth. And throughout, the, even throughout the old Testament, it's like, that's, that's what it continues to bring me back to. You know, it continues to bring me back to that. There's there's many times where I've had to call pe call people out on this stuff. <laughs> there's many times where I've had to call certain people that were close to me and I've had to call them out on this stuff. You know, it is hard. It's hard to sit there because, you know, we we're, we're taught that we should mind our own business. You know, we're taught that we should mind our own business, that we should close we, we should turn our face um you know, we, we grew up, we grew up, uh, you know, being taught that to mind your business, stay out of other folks, you know, situations, you know, things like that. The, the Lord got me going here, but a, a year ago, a year or two ago, he broke it down to me. He said, every time somebody mind their own business, there is someone being abused. When you mind your business, there's another child being abducted. When you mind your own business, then there's another child being raped or molested. When you mind your own business, there is another person being murdered. When you mind your own business, there's another person being robbed. And, and God broke it down. He said he, he placed us here for each other. But when we mind our own business, and as some people say, stay in your own lane, then, then somebody is being hurt and somebody is being destroyed. We're supposed to be here for each other. We're supposed to know what, what's going on in each other's life. And, you know, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, I mean, I'm I'm just hearing this that, you know, we need to get out of that particular mindset. You know, we need to get out of that mindset, mind your own business. How am I supposed to pray for you if I'm minding my own business? You know. When you're still ashamed to to reach out to people and, and you want them to pray for you, I need to know what it is you need me to pray about. What do you need me to pray about? But people are still wanting to be so secretive. They want to keep closed doors, things like that. And this is not of God. Secrets, secrecy, privacy, all of that. No, God is God is open. He he says this is what's happening. This is what's going on. And 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 with Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel is having to watch the righteous and the wicked be destroyed in this particular time because God is saying in you, this is what's happening in the body of Christ. This is what's happening. Priests have violated my law. No difference between the holy and profane. They have showed no difference between the unclean and the clean, you know, and and this is, this is because we mind our own business. We, we turn, we turn and we look the other way and we say, oh, that's, that's not part of my life. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Everything that somebody do, I don't care if they in China, Russia, if they are a part of the body of Christ, it affects your life. It doesn't matter where they are, who they are, whether you've met them face to face. It don't matter if they are part of the body of Christ and they walk around claiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are affecting your very life by what they do, what they say, how they say it, even the thoughts that they think, because you got to, you got to realize in the word it says we are one body. God established a relationship as individuals but he still looks at us as a whole even in the new testament even jesus christ prayed that we all be one like him and the father go and read john 17 he prayed that we all be one all of the ones he said that God gave to him. So when he, when he was getting ready to die on that cross, he saw all of us, all of our names. He said, all the ones that you've given to me, father. So even though we're able to develop individual relationship with the father, God, we're able to develop individually. We're still one whole body. We're still one whole body. So to sit there and say, we need to mind our own business or stay in our own lane thing. When we say things like that, to say those things, you're not really understanding how everything that I say, even me, LaShonda Janine Hearn, everything I say, everything I do, everything I hear, everything that I see, Everything is affecting every single person's life that is within the body of Christ. And the same for for Tony, everything that Tony does, everything that Patricia does, everything that Beverly does, everything that Hamilton does, every, everything, we, we are affecting each other's life. You don't know how big your circle really is. You know, a lot of people say, you know, a lot of people say, if you speak the truth, if you're honest and things like that, the smaller your circle is. But that's really not true. Your circle is really, really large. You know how many people of God there is on this planet? People of God who actually worship the Lord Jesus Christ, who actually are seeking diligently the face of God. And they're all over. We've never met. We didn't meet face to face yet. We got brothers and sisters in Russia. We got brothers and sisters in China. We got brothers and sisters all of Europe, London, England, Africa. South America, we got brothers and sisters every single place, all over the place in the globe. And that's why he talked about, he talks about the scattered. He says the scattered, I, he said, I'm going to bring them back into one place. He said, I'm going I'm to call them and bring them back into one place. And, and that's, and that's what's going to happen. And we're going to be all called into one place. 
But right now we are all over the globe and we are affecting each other. We are affecting each other. How you pray, the way you pray, the way you sing, the way you worship, every everything, everything that you do is affecting my life. I'm affecting yours. We are a, we are one. So get out of that concept. Get out of that mindset. Mind your own business. Stay in your own lane. That 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 right there. That that is that is still division. When you say mind your own business or stay in your own lane, that's still bringing division. That's still separating people, you know, even, even, you know, even with this, this, um, social distancing, I'm going to let you know right now, I do not agree with the social distancing thing. I don't, I only, when I go outside of my house, I comply because, you know, they're making it a law that you wear the mask and that you stay six feet from people and things like that. So because I'm one that will, you know, I will follow the laws of the land as long as I'm here, meaning I'll stop at the stop signs and stop at the red lights and things like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, social distancing is a way for us to divide. It's, it's a way that is, is bringing division, you know, and you have to really, you have to really, really, really look and pay attention. You have to really look and pay attention. We're not able to social distancing doesn't allow connection. Social distancing doesn't allow connection. Social distancing doesn't allow, and 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 it keeps us. Um, we are always safe in the Lord. It is for our safety because of the. Con- I know. I know the coronavirus is real. <laughs> I do. But I, I I also know God is real. You know, it's like God. It, Viruses have viruses have come and gone. Viruses have come and gone, you know, throughout centuries and centuries. Viruses, and we are still here. We are still here. You know, it's like you have you have to. You can. Un, it's 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 just the same as Satan is real. Satan is real. But I'm not fisting to give him that power. I'm not about to to give him, you know, the power of of having his hands in my life. You know that that's what that is. You know, so it's like when when it comes to the certain viruses and things like that. Yeah, God is real, but we use common sense too. Yes, Amen. We do use common sense. Common sense is a must. Common sense, you have to, he he gives us, just like he said, he writes the laws on our heart. He writes, he, he fills us with his spirit. He fills us. And so he gives us certain common sense and certain things and things like that. And that's how come I know uh, social distancing is to divide us. You know, it, it's, it's, it's to try to tear the connection that, that, that people have with each other. You know, uh, I, I know, and, 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 and this is for me, this is not for everybody, you know, this is not for everybody, but the trust and the, and the depth of the trust that I have in the Lord God almighty I know that I can still go up and hug a brother or still go up and hug a sister and and know that God got me. You know, the, the, the social distancing removes the hugs and the connection and the handshakes and 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 us connecting as people, you know, and, and we got to be there for each other and we got to be there for one another. And that's that's just, you know. 
a personal thing. You know, th- this is this is the relationship personally that I have with the Lord God Almighty that I know that I can still hug people, you know. Says so this logic is why some religions don't accept medical science and need needlessly die because they don't accept the knowledge God placed within certain people. Well, I wouldn't know about those religions, but anyway, <laughs> I, I I don't know about uh uh religions that don't accept uh medical uh science. Cause I've gone to doctors, you know, uh, going to doctors, doctors have, people have tainted the medical science. That's, that's how I see that, you know, it's, 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 it's doctors. They, they, they going after money instead of actually healing people instead of, you know, wanting to actually certain medications that I know that they give is to actually keep you sick. But as far as, as far as knowing about the religions that, that don't accept medical science, uh, I don't know about them. Uh, I haven't, I haven't really studied, you know, uh, a lot of different other religions other than the ones that God presented for me to, to look into when they come across my path, then, you know, it's like, I look into them like, you know, Jehovah witness or, or, you know, I've, I've actually have, have had encounters with Jehovah's witness or, um, you know, you know, other certain other religions, but I'm not into, to, you know, Says, yes, God has us, but because some people didn't pay attention to what was happening, an entire AET, if bishops died in the coronavirus because they didn't social distance. There are some religions won't accept blood transfusions. Hmm. Well. Say, I don't mean to take the conversation off track, Mama. No, you're good. All comments are welcome. I told you. Sometimes, you know, you never know what God is doing when, when you know, you make your comments. So all comments are welcome. Don't, don't apologize for that. It's just some, some of the, some of the things that you're talking about right now, it's like, I don't, I don't know about those religions. I don't know, you know, why they would do that. I don't, you know. Um, like me, I can't, me personally, I can't accept just any blood transfusion because of the blood type that I am. I I have a rare blood type. So like, I, I don't know about, you know, but I know that there are reasons why some people, uh, don't accept blood transfusion. Like I can't. I can't because I have a very rare blood type. <laughs> so I can't, I'm actually supposed to be wearing a band to say what my blood type is. So I can't, I couldn't even accept just any transfusion or I would die. <laughs> so, so, uh, but yeah, all comments are welcome. And, and, and so, um, to know, to know that there are religions because that's their religious belief that that's something else but for a personal person like me um uh, i was i was very young when i i went to a doctor and they wanted me to wear this band and they explained to me they said if you if you have to wear a band because if you was to get into a car accident or something was to happen to you and they need to give you blood if they give you the wrong blood, you will die. 
But I chose not to wear the band. I said, mm mm. Doctors only transfuse matching blood types. Uh, Hamilton says, God people should not live in fear of anything. Trust him ultimately, but abide by the law of the land. Yeah, amen. Well, uh, as far as the as far as the matching of the blood, um, this doctor, I was I was like 12 or 13 years old, 13 or 14. And I was at the doctor and they found out what my blood type was. Um, and he explained to me that I needed to wear the band so they wouldn't give me the wrong blood. Um, I think maybe in emergency situations, it's like, you know, because it would take if if I'm if I'm in a car accident and it would take, you know, too long for them to find out what my blood is, if they don't get any blood in me right then and there, it's like I would die, you know, in those in those situations. And and he was explaining to me that I need to wear the band. So that way they'll know, they'll automatically see what blood type I was. And I chose then as a child, I was a child and I chose then uh, not to wear the band. I, I trusted, I trusted the Lord God that much. Even, even then I was like, I'm not fixing to walk around with some band tell him what blood type I am, you know, but yeah, I, I can't accept just any, I can't, I can't accept just, uh, blood transfusions, you know, and I know for a lot of people when the aid, uh, pandemic, when the AIDS, when the AIDS was really, really strong, um, a lot of people ended up contaminated because of blood transfusions. So I, I know I know that there's personal reasons some, for some people. There are personal reasons um, why they would not, you know, allow blood transfusions. But it's 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 good to know that there are religions out there um, who do it for religious reasons. You know, um, I don't know where in the Bible where it would where they would get that from. Uh, I don't know where in the Bible where they would get that from. We we haven't come across anything as far as not being able to accept blood transfusions. So that that that's interesting to know. So thank you for that. But yes, Hamilton, God's people should not live in fear of anything. That is very, very true. So any other comments? So me bringing up the social distancing, that that is definitely a personal, a personal, personal choice. Um, I do know that the coronavirus is real. Um, but I, I, I tend to truly, truly, uh, I, I, I don't, I, t I chose not to give the coronavirus any more power than it already has come across the planet. I, 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 you know, it's like, it's like. You, okay, you have to understand. You have to understand that I'm somebody personally. I'm I'm married, and every year we we just hit our 13th year anniversary on the eighth. Um, but we'll be together 15 years this coming November. And and I and I tell you this is really really true. Every year. From the mo moment that I met my husband, every year he gets the flu virus. Every year. And he be on the brink of death. <laughs> like he he be I, I have to I have to uh nurse him through 
every year. And, 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 and I really believe that God put me through this also, not only him, he put him through it, but put me through it as well, just for this time right now to know that there is nothing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God for your marriage. Thank you. But I really believe that me and him had to go through this and witness this so that we know that no matter what hit us, it, it won't take us out. So every year for the last 15 years, I have had to watch my husband get the flu virus. And we do not do the flu shot. We do not take the flu vaccine. I don't take it. He doesn't take it. We don't give it to our children. I, I never gave it to my older two. We never did the flu. We never did the flu vaccine ever. Not even when they started putting it out there, we didn't we didn't take the food vaccine and he would get sick and he would be almost on the brink. I mean, like it would take it would almost take him out. And God would tell me what to do to help him through it. Like one 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 morning, actually last year, last year, the year before. I remember waking up two o'clock in the morning. I woke up two o'clock in the morning, hearing the voice of the Lord saying he needs enzymes. I didn't even know what enzymes were like each year. God would help me know how to nurse him through. This year, he got hit twice right before the coronavirus. He had the flu two times right before the coronavirus. And even though before he would never go to the doctor, he would all this time, he would never go to the doctor and he went ahead and went to the doctor this time to make sure because he got hit twice and he made sure he went to the doctor and he said, and, and he, and they, and they ruled out the coronavirus. So he came home. He was like, it's not the coronavirus. It's the flu. And it it was like, OK, we know how to get through this because we've been through this. I mean, like literally every year. He goes to work. He goes to work. He and he was he he even goes to work even when he's not feeling. I mean, like. We we've been through this every single year. Like it's 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 nothing to us now. <laughs> nothing for us now. It's like we already know. God got us. Okay. So it hit us. Boom. We move on. And that's 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 what's going on in our, my my household. You know, when things hit us, we we know how to brush it off and just be like, okay. Because we've been through it so many times before and God still has us here. You know, we've been through it so many times that we trust the Lord God. Like nothing in our life changed when the coronavirus hit. Like nothing. It did not affect this household whatsoever. Because I was already homeschooling my kids. So they didn't go through the transition of having to stay at home from school. I was already homeschooling them. God told me to homeschool my kids now when when my youngest was three months old. She was three months old when I heard the Lord God say homeschool them. And I even got some slack back. People, other people in the family was like, why are you going to do that? And blah, blah, blah. And they need to be in school. And, 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 and yeah, I was out and I said, I am going to obey father God. I don't care what y'all talking about. And because I did nothing in, in this household changed nothing. We weren't affected by it. We, we don't get affected by anything that the government does. Like when the government is doing whatever they doing, they're doing, we're able to just keep going, keep moving forward, 
keep pushing forward. You know, this is why I know I can tell you people of God, I can tell you, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about all that. I, 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 I can personally witness to you that you do not have to worry about anything that's going on outside your front doors. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be concerned. You don't have to, you don't have to like got all you have to do is just truly, truly place everything that you're feeling, every, every emotion, every concern, every, every worry, every doubt. All you got to do is just literally place it in the hands of God. And see, I'm, I, I, I can, that, this is why I can say this because I witness it every single year. I witness it every single year. Like God literally comes through and shows out. We get the sniffles, we get colds, we get whatever. And, and do you know, I don't even get, I don't even get when, when, when I think maybe out of 15 years, out of 15 years, I may have caught the flu from him maybe one or two times. But other than that, if he gets the flu, we don't get nothing. It's just him. And he's in the same household as us. He breathes on us, you know, things like that. But we, me and the kids, we don't get, we don't get sick, you know, and it's right there in the house with us. So it's like, I am a true, true witness to let you know, you don't have to worry. You don't have to. Yes, the coronavirus is real, but so is Satan. Do we walk around going, oh, Satan is running around every, no, mm mm you 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 know these things are real but you know that God got you God got you period there is no wavering in that there should not be any wavering in that you know God got you and that's it that and and, that, and that's what you and if you and if you start wavering in your feelings and start wavering in your emotions you need to hand that over to God say lord that you know, I, I, I'm I'm starting to get concerned. You and, and you need to place that right back into his hands. Don't remove the trust. Period. N not not even a little bit. You know, not even a little bit. And you just trust in God. Period. At this point, I'm even just like Paul. Paul says. Paul says to live in Christ is to gain to die in Christ is to gain. That's where I am right now. That, and, and that's me personally. That's where I am right now. If something was to come through and happen, I already know where I'm going to be at, <laughs> you know, Beverly says, Hamilton, Hamilton Baldwin, I agree. I'm so not fearful. I'm most definitely faithful, but I am also a smart and sensible kingdom citizen that recognizes the need for personal responsibility. Definitely, definitely. You know, for sure, for sure. No, no one, no, I, I really hope, you know, I really hope that we can get to a point to where when we have personal decisions concerning certain things that that we understand that we're not we're not saying that you don't believe or you don't trust. We we if you are a true child of God, you know who true ch children of God are. And Beverly, you are definitely a kingdom citizen, you know. Beverly, you are a kingdom citizen. You are highly favored. You are blessed. Uh, you know, I've even gotten to know you personally. 
and 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 so nowhere nowhere is anyone saying that you you're not faithful that's a personal decision a personal decision that you've decided you you do social distancing distancing <laughs> yes we, yes we're all on the same page amen so some people, you know, some people don't agree with the social distancing. Some people do. Some people agree with the social distancing. I just personally don't. I don't agree with the social distancing. Um, and and no one for me, no one can come, you know, because because what I have witnessed in my life. And, and what I go through every single year. uh. You know, for me, the social distancing is a distraction. For me personally, that's what it is. It's a distraction. Uh, it removes the connections. You know, things that I know God have me going out there to do. Uh, for me, the social distancing removes all that connection. Uh, it dis- it's, it's a distraction for me. Uh, and, and that's just a personal thing you know, in my walk in Christ Jesus. And so for a lot of people, they want, they, they will, you know, social distance. And so I only do it. Like if I go to the grocery store, I'll stand on the blue lines and I'll, I'll keep the six, you know, the six feet, whatever, you know, when I'm out there, uh, in the public, you know, I'll, I'll adhere to the laws of the land. Um, but when you come to my house, if you if you was to ever come to my house, I'm going to give you a hug <laughs> or, you know, we're going to sit next to each other in my house. There is no social distancing. And so that's why, you know, and, and I believe that's why a lot of people won't go to other people's houses because of that, you know. Um, but if I invite you to my house and you actually come, uh, we're not going to be bumping elbows. <laughs> I'm going to hug you or, you know, I'm going to hug you or we're going to sit next to each other. You don't have to wear no mask in my house. You know, I, yes, social distance and wear a mask and still witness. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah, when I'm out there in the public, of course, I'll wear a mask when I go grocery shopping, when I go do whatever, I'll wear the mask and I'll, I'll, I'll do all that. I was just, you know, saying that personally, I don't agree. I don't agree with keeping us apart, you know, but, um, but yes, wear the mask and still go out there. Love on folk from a distance. <laughs> yes. Um, that 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 is that is something. But but yeah. And see, I love this. I love this for us to conversate about certain things. You know, we, we got to get that conversation out there. You know, we have to get the conversation out there and we have to talk, talk amongst ourselves and, and, and really, you know, see where people are at, you know, so y'all know where I am at. I know where you're at. And, and, and then, you know, we, we come to an understanding. So I, I know for a fact that, you know, if I come, come over to someone else's house, you know, uh, they want me to still wear my mask when I come into their house. I'll still wear my mask. You know, I'm not going to sit there and and uh, put my personal what I believe. Right. I try to be considerate of other other feelings. Yeah. You know. Yes. So. Like even my mother came over one time and and she wore her mask. You know, my mom came over to bring us some stuff and she wore her mask. Uh, we went to her house, you know, a couple of times. Um, and then we we wore our mask. But, you know. 
I, I know we're going to get past all this. I know, I know God is going to get us through this. I, I know that it's all good, <laughs> you know, and the Lord is going to get us through. Um, yeah, this, this is, this is good. This is good. Getting to know one another and things like that. Like I said, all, all comments are welcome. We, we can talk about it. I am grateful that the pandemic has moved my focus from myself to him. Amen. I'm reading my Bible more. Uh, del delving dive is that diving into the word more seeking him where he may be found more. It has helped me grow closer to my God and savior. And it has been a blessing. Amen. Amen. And see right there, that's where you can witness and say that all, just like the scripture says, all things work together for our good. So no matter what, all things work together for our good. Amen. Also, I would have never met you guys were it not for the coronavirus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And 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 that's what and and that's that's taking the bad for the you know that's taking something bad and turning into into something good, like all things work together for us no matter what, and 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 that's 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 awesome that that is so awesome, you know that you can that you can sit there and say that it's it's just like certain bad people that have came into your life and you thank God for that. Because if they hadn't have been in your life, it wouldn't have pushed you to greatness. Like, I really believe that this pandemic is pushing us into greatness. It is pushing us into positions um, that we would have never thought that we would have been in before. You know, I, I believe that God is literally taking it and transforming us into something that we would have never thought we'd be. And so that that's really that's really really awesome. Um all things work together for us that that say we are being close to the one who is the most important that we be close to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it's it's such a glorious thing, you know. We're learning more about him. We, our relationship is deepening um, with him. And, and it's like, you know, he is taking us to levels that, you know, we probably would have never experienced if the pandemic hadn't have happened. And I and I really believe that's why he there's certain things that he allows even throughout history, you know he he has allowed certain things to happen just to push us into greatness. So it even all goes back to the cross, you know, us carrying our cross. You know, if if Jesus Christ hadn't have been portrayed. If he hadn't have been portrayed, if he hadn't have been crucified, if he hadn't have died on the cross, it wouldn't have pushed him into the in, and we wouldn't have salvation even now. So it's like it's like tragedy is always used to push us to greatness, to push us, you know, to a place that we wouldn't have never even gone to. Um, uh, Beverly says, as the word said, the devil meant it for bad, but God has made it for our good. It is not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. Yes, that that is very true. And it helps us to look at tragedy different. It helps us to look at tragedy in a whole different mindset. You know, the blood. Amen, Hamilton. It, it helps us to look at tragedy in a whole different mindset. We're able to see tragedy in the mind of Christ instead of our eyes, instead of the way we we normally see tragedy. 
When we see tragedy, when the human brain or the human mind see tragedy, then we automatically go into the woe is me. And just like the word says, we we automatically start having a pity party. We go into a woe is me when we see tragedy. But when you are in Jesus Christ, he gives you his mindset and he lets you see things the way he sees them. And tragedy is just a way for him to be able to come in and perform and push us into greatness. So he uses that. He uses the tragedy to push us to our next level or position us and promote us. He uses the tragedy to bless us to f- and to pour favor on us. You know, he takes that tragedy and that and that's why he says all things work together for those who love the Lord. All those all, all things work together for our good who loves the Lord. Amen. So that's really, really awesome. And, and, and I thank God for you, Beverly. I thank God for you, Hamilton. I thank God for you, Patricia. I thank God for every single last one of you. I thank God for your individual personalities. I thank God for who he has made you to be. And and I thank God that he saw fit that you'd be in my life. You know, I, I thank God for it every single day. Every every person that God sees fit to even come across my path, whether it's for a brief moment or for years, you know, I thank God for every single person, whether 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 that person has come into my life for bad, you know, um, and how I how I started learning to see that whenever someone comes into my life. And they come into my life for bad. They actually are going to walk away with the benefit because they're going to see God. <laughs> That's how I see that now. Yeah, you may have been like certain people may have been sent to come and destroy you or anything like that. But when they do, they're going to have to face God. <laughs> so. Whether whether they're there for bad, it's actually good for them because they're going to have to face God no matter what. <laughs> we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Hamilton, you, you just makes me smile. <laughs> brother, brother Hamilton. Y'all, this has been awesome. I'm actually, you know, I'm I'm actually grateful for the times where, um, you know, we 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 just got into this whole conversation. I I like having conversations and and talking and things like that. So. I know it's 655, but let's read the other part that we were supposed to be reading. We just got off into this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love y'all. I don't know if any of you have to get off or anything like that. This will be one of those mornings where we actually go past seven o'clock. All right, so we just, we read Ezekiel 21 and 22, and now we just need to read Hebrews 11, starting with verse 23, and then 12 is just verses one through three. So And if you have to get off, I understand. I understand this morning we just got it. We just, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Getting to know one another, having conversations. 
I love it. I love communication. I love talking. So <laughs> it's not a big thing for me. Let's see, verse 11. So I'm going to read Hebrews 11, starting with verse 23. If you do have to get off, that is fine. You know, I normally try to get off by seven o'clock. I try not to keep y'all on long, but I was enjoying the conversation. So (laughs) sometimes we need to stop and, you know, talk about things. All right, so Hebrews 11, verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also and of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins, and goat skins being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So for for chapter 12, we're just going to read verses one through three. Says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint 
in your minds. This this is actually so perfect after the conversation we just had. <laughs> this is this is actually really really perfect. God knows what he's doing. Like here we have this conversation and he even breaks down and 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 that's what, and, and I'd be saying the same thing. It's like we we done gone through this and this and this throughout history, throughout time, you know. With faith, we just keep going and keep pushing forward, you know. And then every time, every time, every time any worry or doubt or anything, any concerns or anything that tries to come upon you, like he said, consider Jesus. Just think about the cross. Think about the cross. Consider Jesus. Consider the sacrifice that he made. Consider, I mean, like every single time, you know, when things are trying to come against you, trials, tribulations, sickness, disease, think about the Lord and how he was crucified and all those things that we, all those things that could, could worry us. He took it upon himself, you know, consider that every single time. And that that's what helps you push through. You know, that's what helps you push through. You you remember and you consider the fact that Christ, Jesus, all these things that are happening, Christ and our he said it on the cross and he's bringing me to that again. He said it on the cross. It is finished. It's finished. Yeah, we're still here on this planet and we're still living this life and we're still moving forward. There's all of it, but he he had all of us right right here. And he said it is finished. You know, even even though we we're we're seeing wars and and famine and and pestilence all over the place, we're seeing all kinds of things, but Jesus Christ said it, it is finished. He said it on the cross. It's just like in the Old Testament when God was already setting it up and he says, I am going to give you a new covenant. Give you an everlasting covenant. One that can never be broken ever again. God was already setting it up and establishing it. So when Jesus Christ came, And on that cross, he says, it is finished. So now we're just waiting for the second coming of the Lord. We live in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're just, all all we're really doing is just waiting for the second coming of the Lord. And you are just developed. You now, now all you All you have to do is just because he said, I'm going to write my law and my commandments and everything on their hearts and write it in their minds. So we we all we do, all we are to do now is just praise him, praise him, worship him. All this other stuff is literally a distraction. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else is vanity. If you're not doing it for the Lord God Almighty, if you're not in it for the Lord, everything else is vanity. Everything else, it it doesn't matter. So you want your life to be about the Lord. When you wake up and you say, Lord God, Thank you for putting this breath in my lungs again. I'm here for you. What you want me to do? You know? Because everything else, everything else is, is, it it should be all about, we we just, we waiting for the coming of the Lord. We waiting for the second coming, (laughs) you know? And we, we, we are to, to shine. We are to season. We are to, 
I mean, that that right there should be the main concern of your life. If you're going to have any concerns, that is how you going out there proclaiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Going out there, preaching and teaching the word. Just like we read in second was that second Timothy four, preach the word in season and out of season. That that should be the main priority of your life. Worshiping, praising, praying, preaching and teaching. That should be your main, main concern. Everything else falls in line after that. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven first, period. That that should be the very thing that you, as you're even waking up and you realize you are still alive, as you are waking up and you're you're opening your eyes, the, the first thing should be heaven, God, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You you should be waking up, coming out of your sleep, praising the Lord God. I mean, that should be like the main priority thing in your life. Not how much money are you going to make today or, you know. And, and there's many, many times I have to catch myself, you know. Many, many times I have to catch myself. And I have to, and, and, and I have to bring my mind back to Jesus, you know, and then I say, Lord, OK, you know what's in my heart. You know what concerns I have. You know what worries I have. You know what you know, everything that I have. And I say, here, take it. I give it to you. You you know, you know what's best for me. You know, you know which way to direct me, you know. And, and and that's what that's what it's that's what it's all about, Jesus. You know. Well, we we did that. Had great conversation. <laughs> we had great conversation and everything. Um and we should do that a lot more. Have conversations. We should have conversations, good conversations. These were good conversations. You know, good conversations about the Lord, about Jesus, what's going on, things like that. You know, he invites that. He wants us to talk, you know. So if you are just coming on, we read Ezekiel 21 and 22 and then Hebrews 11, starting with verse 23. And then for chapter 12, we we read verses one through three. So if anyone has anything else to say, I took y'all 10 minutes, 10 minutes past seven. That wasn't that bad. 10 minutes past seven. That wasn't that bad for us to be able to, you know, because believe me, when you get to know me, I'm telling you, I could talk about the Lord and whatever is going on all day. <laughs> If you if you got to know me um, and you and you have to realize I was shy half my life. I was like this half my life. And the Lord said, "Mm -mm, I need you to speak. (laughs) God came in and said, no, I need you to speak. I need you to talk. And so that's what I do. Um, But if you if you had known me. um. If you had known me before 30, I I would say I really started really I really started coming out of my cocoon maybe in my 30s. In my 30s, I really started um just slowly coming out. I'm literally that butterfly that 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 stayed in that cocoon for a long time <laughs> and I and I would you know, barely come out of it and, and, and maybe show a wing here or there, you know, but, um, yeah, I could, I could talk all day now and and I'm telling you, that's only God. (laughs) That is only God. 
because there's no way bef- bef- before I was 30. Mm-mm. I would have had to really, really have gotten to know you and, and you would have had to been in my life for some years for you to see the real side of, of LaShonda it, before I was 30. Like I was so quiet, but yeah. All right. Well, if anyone has anything else to say, no, no more comments, no more comments. All right. You know that I love you all. I love you very much. And I am praying for you. Keep me in your prayers. I am praying for you every day. And, um, um, this is good. I I have fun this morning, like extra fun <laughs> having conversations. I like it. I love to communicate and, and talk. So thank you for that. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for uh, uh, engaging in conversation. Um, uh, that, that was really a blessing, a blessing for me um, as well. So I love you all. And uh, you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I'll see you 530 in the morning.